Hi everyone, today June 15 is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So I am going to talk about elder abuse and what are the roles of physiotherapy. We know that in about 10 years from now, the number of persons aged 60 years or over is projected to grow by about 40% from 1 billion to about 1.4 billion globally uh, more than the younger people and this increase will be the greatest and the most rapid in the developing countries and recognizing the that greater attention needs to be paid to the specific challenges affecting all the persons uh, today i am going to highlight one of the field of human rights that is elder abuse the united nation uh, general assembly designated 15 june as world elder abuse awareness day to commemorate each year on 15 june to highlight one of the worst manifestations of ageism and inequality in our society that is elder abuse according to uh, who estimates one in six people aged uh, over 60 suffers from abuse that means uh, nearly 140 million people globally uh, uh, being abused and this number might be much higher as elder abuse is normally hidden and is not reported the who defines abuse as a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationships it can be uh, by the family or friends or sometimes uh, even by the healthcare providers uh, where there is an expectation of trust that causes harm or distress to the elderly so let's look uh, at some of the examples of uh, elder abuse there are actually a uh, number of numerous uh, types of uh, elder abuse. Examples, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, sexual abuse, um, exploiting the senior, and also uh, neglecting uh, the elderly. Uh, in physical abuse, uh, for example, like uh, uh family or friends or even uh, physiotherapists uh, therapists or those uh, any other uh, uh, other healthcare providers using force to threaten or physically injure uh, the elderly for example like you know forcing them to eat uh, or to drink or to take medications or to move to to do exercises um or to sleep so this kind of uh, physical uh, forces uh, is actually uh, considered as abuse you know other than that like you know um, elderly uh, is normally very vulnerable eh? sometimes they are uh, they just, just can't handle themselves you know to do the activities of daily living you know we, so we normally tend to force them to do it themselves but actually they cannot do it uh, again, um, you know, using uh, physical forces to probably uh, till you injure them, like slapping, you know, beating them, grabbing them from the hands, you know, to push them to change their position, to sit, to stand up. All these are considered abuse when actually they refuse to follow your instructions. Right. So there are other uh, abuse like emotional uh, abuse which can actually um, stress or harm their their feeling you know the emotions um, and also uh, which is beyond their control and uh, we do not know you know we just can't read their mind and actually they they are feeling very stressful 
when uh, sometimes you know you we use verbal uh, attack or uh, verbal abuse uh, to the elderly and sometimes uh, sexual sexual forces is also considered as abuse you know um, for example like um, you know being tricked being threatened or otherwise uh, you know or coerced uh, upon an elder including anyone who is unable to uh, you know they just can't give consent and they are being forced so that is um, considered as a, probably a sexual abuse and also uh, now we uh, uh, very often we hear from the news uh, uh, elderly being uh, you know, uh, uh, cases like theft, you know, uh, people stealing money, stealing their property, or even stealing their signatures, you know, to change the their ownership of their money or their property. Um, so it's considered as a fraud, you know, exploiting the elderly. Even in the family, it can happen, you know, the children can actually steal the signatures, uh, and you know uh, change the name of uh, the ownership of the money or property and uh, neglecting the elder elderly is also a kind of abuse uh, a caregiver's failure failure or refusal to provide uh, for a vulnerable elderly's uh, elders uh, safety uh, physical or emotional needs you know for example like uh, if you abandon them at home alone, you know, uh, you go to work without providing them uh, meals and safety is also considered as um, elder neglect. Okay, so this is just uh, some examples of the uh, types of uh, abuse, eh? elder abuse. Okay, so as a physiotherapist, uh, what can we do about uh, elder abuse? So since we are professionals, we are by right we we have knowledge you know we are trained to um, identify and detect whether there is an abuse uh, that occur right and then we need to report and support this elderly advocate and act as a liaison uh, with any uh, community resources we need to help them you know we need to support the elderly uh, uh, we need to prevent them from being abused. Okay, so how do we respond to elderly abuse? These guiding principles was actually um, uh, provided by uh, 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 um, Canada. Uh, Canada, they have this. Uh, they came up with these principles about uh, eight principles. Number one is respect personal values. So it means that respect the personal values, their priorities, their goals and lifestyle choices of uh, the elderly, identify support networks and solutions that suit the older adult's individuality. The second right is uh, recognize uh, their right to make decisions. If they are mentally capable, uh, they have the right to make decisions, including choices others might consider risky or unwise. Number three is to seek consent or permission. In most situa situations, you must get consent from, an, uh, from the elderly before taking actions or disclosing their personal or health information. Number four is avoid ageism. Pre prevent ages assumptions or discriminatory thinking based on age from affecting uh, judgment avoid stereotype or stereotypical language about older uh, people and show respect for the inherent dignity of all human beings regardless of age Number five is to know that abuse and neglect can happen anywhere. So be aware that abuse and neglect of uh, elderly can occur in a variety of circumstances from home care to family violence. So as a, uh, as a healthcare provider, uh, we need to be able to identify uh, signs and symptoms and 
uh, report. And number six is uh, involve the elderly in problem solving and decision making. Ask questions, you know, uh, if whether they want to know uh, further about what uh, you are talking about. Responses to abuse, uh, neglect and risk of abuse or neglect should involve them, uh, should involve their views and their concerns. Number seven is uh, we need to place a high value on their independence and autonomy. Choose the least intrusive way to provide support or assistance to the elderly. And lastly, is to respond appropriately. An appropriate response to abuse, neglect or risk of abuse or neglect should uh, respect the legal rights of the elderly while addressing the need for support, assistance or protections in practical ways. So we need to know the laws in uh, uh, how to uh, report, you know, how to handle uh, elder uh, abuse. And uh, there is one, I was looking for evidence on whether a physiotherapist or physical therapist uh, are well versed or have knowledge in uh, physical elder abuse. So this study uh, was conducted um, very long ago, very classical study. Um, a study conducted in Michigan. Uh, the purpose of this study is to determine the knowledge that PTs possess in three areas of abuse management, that is recognition of signs and symptoms of physical abuse, awareness of state mandatory reporting laws, and knowledge of uh, facility protocols for reporting abuse. And they also uh, uh, aim to determine the Frequency, uh, phys physical therapist, uh, suspected elder abuse, and the compliance to uh, the Michigan law, which requires the reporting of suspected abuse by the healthcare uh, workers. So, uh, they uh, distributed about 400 uh, questionnaire to uh, licensed uh, PTs. Uh, and they receive about, uh, they analyze about 31% from the return rate. Uh, and their result shows that, the result showed that uh, um, facility training was a significant factor in knowledge of the mandatory reporting law. Facility training showed a trend towards in, improving the knowledge level of the signs and symptoms of abuse um, and about only about 25% of respondents had suspected abuse of uh, one of their patients. However, over half failed to report their suspicions. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, this study uh, concluded that there is a lack of knowledge in recognizing and managing elder abuse and uh, all therapists that suspected abuse did not report their suspicions to proper legal authorities. Okay, so I think that's all for our uh, discussions on elder abuse and in fact this is a very very interesting topic since Malaysia is going to be uh, an um, aging country very, very soon from now. So uh, I guess uh, we need to continue our discussions on this, um, but uh, not in this platform maybe. But if you have any further questions on elder abuse and what physiotherapists can do about it, you may contact me at my email. Thank you very much.